Welcome back to Madden 17, everybody. My name is Mr. Hurricane, and it's time to begin the San Diego Chargers franchise. I have been looking forward to getting this series up and running, and it's time to kick things off here with the new owner of the San Diego Chargers. They have been purchased by Leon Daniels. And it's time to begin a new era here in San Diego. Here is the first media question given to Leon Daniels. Just basically saying that the only thing that matters is whether this team can win. The Chargers are one of 13 teams to have never won a Super Bowl, and they've missed the playoffs five out of the last six years, including a 4-12 season last year where they dealt with a lot of injuries and finished last place in the improved AFC West. It's a very tough division, one that is home to the defending Super Bowl champion Denver Broncos, the Kansas City Chiefs who have done a very good job under Andy Reid, and the Oakland Raiders, who have some of the most promising young talent in the NFL. With that being said, it's time to get introduced to this 2016 Chargers roster, and these are the five players on injured reserve, as I'm using the Week 1 rosters with pre-existing injuries. Stevie Johnson is not on this list, but I have lowered his ratings and removed him from the team, as he should be on the IR here. But here are the players you will see and the leaders of this team going into the first season of this franchise. It all begins here with Keenan Allen, one of the best receivers in the NFL, a prolific route runner. He is a complete receiver. He just needs to stay healthy as the primary target for Phillip Rivers. Defensively, Jason Verrett is a promising young cornerback, a bit undersized, but is the most talented defensive back on this roster. He can play man, he can play zone, not great at press, but he's versatile, and I think he's going to be a very good part of this defense. Melvin Ingram is our best pass rusher coming off his first double-digit sack season and now in the final year of his contract. He offers speed and pass rush ability and also can play against the run. Opposite him, you will see Jeremiah Atachu entering his third year out of Georgia Tech, another good pass rusher, has great block shedding and even more speed than Melvin Ingram. I think his ceiling could be even higher and he's four years younger than Melvin Ingram. Leading the way offensively is, of course, the veteran quarterback Phillip Rivers, who's had many good years in San Diego and should still have a few good years left. It depends on how long he wishes to stick around. He is 34 years old, but is very accurate and one of the better pocket passers in the NFL. Some extra help has been brought in to solidify the offensive line with center Matt Slauson, who is a good run and pass blocker, Slauson is 30 years old, and this offensive line has a lot to prove this year. Also in free agency, the Chargers brought in Casey Hayward from the Green Bay Packers, who is a great zone cover corner and will be our nickel cornerback, at least starting out. I do think he can challenge Brandon Flowers to play on the outside. Those three cornerbacks aren't the biggest or the fastest. We're going to be playing a lot of zone coverage this year. The third major piece brought in this year in free agency was Travis Benjamin, who had a great contract year with the Browns last season, and he offers that downfield speed threat that should complement Keenan Allen very nicely. Then there's Melvin Gordon, the second year running back, who didn't have a great rookie season. Zero touchdowns, three and a half yards a carry, only 641 yards on the ground. On top of that, he had five fumbles and his longest run was 27 yards. Gordon has a lot of improving to do here in his second season, but you're also going to see a lot of Danny Woodhead at tailback, especially on passing downs. He caught 80 passes last year and should still be a big-time receiving target for this offense that doesn't have a lot of receiving depth. Defensively, the number one pick for the Chargers this year was Joey Bosa from Ohio State. I like both what he and Corey Legion offer as players who can both rush the passer and are expected to stop the run. I expect both to be cornerstones of this Chargers 3-4 defense. Legion is 26 years old and Bosa is 21. At linebacker behind these two defensive ends, you have Manti Teo entering a contract year as well. Now he has a combination of three weaknesses here that I'm not a fan of. Lack of zone coverage, block shedding, only 77 speed. So we'll have to see how he does here in his fourth season. Alongside him, you have Denzel Perryman. He's entering his second season and is faster and can shed blocks better than Manti Teo. Neither, however, are very prolific in coverage. Here is a quick rundown of the rest of the roster. There are still some other key players that I'll talk about more as we move on. You have first-year tight end Hunter Henry, who should be the successor eventually to veteran Antonio Gates. 
Defensively, the nose tackle is Brandon Meebane, and the starting safeties are Dwight Lowry and Jaleel Day. Now let's take a look at the first practice squad I have assembled, with some key positions being targeted here, especially safety, one I target as an early need in this series. I have Jordan Richards and Dexter McCoyle on the practice squad. They both have some coverage and speed, but need development and intangibles and some other areas. At right tackle, as I'm concerned about our edge pass protectors, there's Sean Coleman, who projects mainly as a backup out of Auburn. Then you have DeJohn Smith. I like his potential with his speed, zone coverage, his agility, and press. Man coverage isn't great, and we're going to play some man, but he needs more development to be ready to play. Brandon Meebane is our current nose tackle. He's a veteran, so I have Chris Mays here on the practice squad who already has 80 block shedding, 88 strength. He could find himself on the roster sooner than later. Middle linebacker Jatavis Brown is intriguing with his 87 speed and his 84 hit power, 81 pursuit combination. Then you have Jawan Edwards, a power back here on the practice squad with 82 trucking, 90 acceleration, which is important when your speed's only an 84. Then there's Spencer Pulley, a guard prospect who has 76 run blocking, 76 pass block. And then there is Titus Davis, wide receiver. 88 speed, 83 jumping, 78 catching, needs to improve those hands. And to round out the practice squad, we have a quarterback, Alan Levy, the rookie from Indiana. And his accuracy isn't great, but there weren't many options here for practice squad quarterbacks. He has some decent throw power and maybe could develop into a backup quarterback. You will see some gameplay with the roster here in a moment, but first taking a look at the stadium overview. A 4 rating. San Diego has been waiting a long time for a new stadium. Their current one is 49 years old, and they don't have a positive rating in any category. This team needs a new stadium, and that is one of the goals in this series. I also fired the lead scout here, who helps with tight end overall. That's not that important, especially with Hunter Henry on the roster. So I hired a scout who has O-line overall, and that covers five starting positions. And I suspect that O-line could be a weakness of ours here in Season 1. So here is some practice gameplay, and then we'll get into game planning for Week 1 against the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I want to first talk about the offense. I do like the playmakers here with Gordon, Allen, and Travis Benjamin. I do wonder how this O-line can hold up both against the pass and the run. I think our tackle situation is better than our guard situation, but those tackles are going to end up facing Khalil Mack, Justin Houston, and Vaughn Miller six times a season. So I think tackle is more important for us than most teams, even though it's already one of the more important positions. At the interior, you have some more promise with Matt Slauson at center, although he is 30 years old. There are a couple young centers on the roster. The starting guards have not played well enough. You have Orlando Franklin at left guard and DJ Fluker who has moved from right tackle to right guard. And he also needs to show that he's going to deserve a second contract in San Diego. With that being said, I could still see this offense putting up a lot of points if they can remain healthy. Keenan Allen is an extremely good receiver and he just needs to stay on the field. Travis Benjamin gives that big play ability, but behind those two guys with Stevie Johnson not on the team because of the injury situation, you have Dontrell Inman, Tyrell Williams, and I picked up rookie from Notre Dame Chris Brown to be the number five wide receiver. With that lack of depth at wide receiver, you could see a lot more two tight end looks. And we're going to keep tight ends on the field for pretty much every play. You probably won't see a lot of 405 wide sets. Antonio Gates will start. Hunter Henry is behind him. And I have a lot of hope for Hunter Henry. We'll be putting a lot of development into him. Between Gates, Henry, Benjamin, and Keenan Allen, along with the tailbacks, and especially what Danny Woodhead can do in the passing game, I see this offense doing well in the air. I still have questions about the running game, especially with the blocking. Can Melvin Gordon hang on to the football? We'll see how things go. We've faced some pretty good defenses in this division. Switching gears now to defense. I like the position they're in with cornerback having Verrett, Flowers, and Casey Hayward. Nice grab here by Antonio Gates. Deep against Manti Teo and a couple other defenders. I do think then Teo and Perryman can be a pretty good run-stopping duo, although Teo is in a contract year. I'm not really sure about our nickel linebacker situation just because we don't really have coverage linebackers on this team. 
we have some pass rushers and run stoppers and pass rusher is one area I think is promising on this roster because you have Melvin Ingram and Jeremiah Atachu, Corey Legit, along with Joey Bosa. Those four in a nickel formation is a pretty good setup. Behind them, however, I like to rotate defensive linemen, and I just don't see depth at really any area with this team. They have three good cornerbacks, and that's where I think they're the deepest. The safety situation really scares me, especially because of the zone coverage we'll be playing. In many situations, it'll be one or two of those safeties protecting deep thirds of the field, or deep halves, it depends on what we're running. It's going to be a lot of cover two and cover three. Because I'm not sure about those starting safeties, again, Dwight Lowry and Jaleel Day, you might see some of the backups. There's Daryl Stuckey, and there's Adrian Phillips. We have a couple more on the practice squad. Linebacker depth shows some promise, but not so much in pass defense at the moment. Defensive line depth, not a huge fan of it. Offensively, we are very thin beyond Travis Benjamin, who's had one promising season, and Keenan Allen, who's had some injury struggles. Then you have Hunter Henry, Antonio Gates, that's a decent situation. At running back, there is Melvin Gordon, Danny Woodhead, and then Andre Williams. And every team at some point is going to deal with injuries or poor play. And the question is, do you have the backups to replace those players? I don't think this team does. The backups and depth is one of the biggest weaknesses of this roster. At a glance, looking at the starting lineups, you might say this team's kind of a sleeper team. But that's like if everybody stays healthy and if you can mask the weaknesses of the existing roster, which I think is a very tough task. That doesn't mean there isn't any promising talent behind the starters. There is one right here I like a lot, Adrian Phillips from Texas, who is a backup strong safety. I'd also like to see what we can do with players like Joshua Perry at linebacker. At cornerback, there's Craig Mager and Pierre Desir. And at linebacker, there is Kyle Emanuel, who should get a fair amount of snaps here in his second season. So now it's time to look ahead as we begin game planning here for the Kansas City Chiefs. Jamal Charles, Justin Houston, Don Terry Poe, Alex Smith, Jeremy Macklin, Eric Berry, Travis Kelsey. Really good talent on this team, and it's a great test for Week 1 to see where this team is at for the moment. And it's especially a good chance to grade the offensive line against a very good pass rushing unit and a stout front seven. Our front seven will be tested against the run, and I expect our secondary to hold up well against the pass. Every week I also have three players I get to focus on for extra experience, and I might change out these players every now and then. But for now I have Hunter Henry, Melvin Gordon, and Adrian Phillips. Phillips is maybe my favorite reserve player on this roster. He has 87 speed, 77 zone, and 90 acceleration. I think he probably fits better as a free safety. I'm not sure about his ability against the run. But I'm hoping with development, he can challenge for a starting spot. Hey, boys. Coming out of yesterday's practice, we all know it wasn't good enough. Today's practice, it's got to be great. Game day's coming fast. Let's go out here and let's be great, okay? So here we are, game planning for the Kansas City Chiefs and against their zone coverage and cover one looks, the shallow cross was the point of emphasis. I like this idea against both of those things that the Chiefs like to run primarily. And we ended up here finishing four of five of these drills complete. That'll offer a decent game day boost when we call the shallow cross concept. Let's talk. We've been talking about you getting better every week. You know what? Today you got better. Let's keep it up. I will be showing a lot more of the side stuff in franchise this year, especially being an owner and being able to look at ticket sales and jersey sales and some just really cool information that is, it's all supplemental, but it's all cool for the experience here in franchise mode. Now for the defense, the focus was cover two, and I do think we'll run a lot of cover two, especially with some of the adjustments you can make in zone coverage this year, and the vertical hook zone is one of the things that makes it more viable. And Manti Teo as the middle read linebacker is going to be a big question whether we run a lot of cover two or not. That's an important role in this today scheme. Today simply wasn't good enough. We have high aspirations as a team. If we want to get there, we got to raise our game. Today was not good enough. Next practice, I want it better. The defensive drill didn't go as well as the offensive one. Just a bronze medal here, and this is a look at the results of the training. 
In future episodes, I will be tying in game planning more into the actual game episodes. Maybe not so much with week one because I'm diving into it so much here. But week one is around the corner, guys, and that's going to be the next episode here in the series. And that game will be here on my channel tomorrow as we kick off the first game of the San Diego Chargers franchise against the Kansas City Chiefs. And I'm very happy to get this franchise started over a month earlier than I did with my Madden 16 franchise. I spent a lot of time doing slider testing. I didn't play a lot of Ultimate Team or Draft Champions because I wanted to get this series ready to go. These are the sliders I'm using to begin the series, and these will likely change at some point once I notice areas that need balance, and use these as a base. If there's an area you think needs to be tweaked, then go ahead and tweak it. These are not a one-size-fit-all slider set, and there really isn't such thing. And that, guys, will end this episode here, the first one in the San Diego Chargers franchise. We get week one underway tomorrow. Thank you all for watching. Let me know what you thought of this debut episode of the San Diego Chargers franchise. Leave a like if you were hyped up for the series and subscribe to watch all the upcoming episodes. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.